Hi, it's Matt with Trout Soup. Good morning, friends. Today's weather report is nasty, cold, and thunderstorms everywhere. So we figured we'd go fly fishing today in Rocky Mountain National Park. If you recall from our last video, we did the Bear Lake Loop, a 9.5 mile loop covering three lakes, going for the cutthroat slam in the park. Today, we're heading, as a crow flies, about 9.5 miles southeast to the Wild Basin area. The Wild Basin area, my wife Jessica and I visited last fall, and we fly fished between Lower Copeland Falls and Upper Copeland Falls on the North St. Vrain Creek. Today, we're heading 4.9 miles straight up into the heart of the Wild Basin, passing by several cascades and waterfalls on our, wa on our way to Oozel Lake. This is a greenback cutthroat trout restoration area, and Oozel Lake itself purportedly holds greenback cutthroat trout. In case you didn't know, the greenback cutthroat trout is our Colorado state fish. They are extremely rare. They are now a threatened species rather than critically endangered, which means that these restoration areas are helping to restore the population of these trout. So I hope you'll join me for today's adventure to Oozel Lake. Come along for the ride. Wonderful trail improvements throughout Rocky Mountain National Park. That's why so many people come and use these trails. Y'all may or may not know, probably about a mile out of Oozel Lake, and we're looking at this, this stream on, uh, I believe this is Oozel Creek, and it's gorgeous. 
I don't think you understand just how difficult it is for a fly fisherman to pass by this meadow with all this beautiful water. It's not a raging torrent up here because we're getting a lot closer to the tree line. It's shrouded in this cloud over here that you probably can't see. Down here in this valley, greenback cutthroat trout dominate. What good is living the life you've been given If all you do is stand in your place I'm on a river that winds on forever Follow till I get where I'm going Maybe I'm heading to die But I'm still gonna try I guess I'm going along Oh, there goes some fish. I just saw two of them. So we're exploring the creek here, probably a little over a quarter mile away from Oozle Lake. This is Oozle Creek. And boy, it looks fishy. Look at the beautiful water here. For a fly fisherman, you could spend all day on just this upper section, fishing all these pocket pools and runs. Little pocket pools, little pocket pools everywhere. When you arrive at one of these high mountain lakes, it's really hard to avoid the sudden urge to pull out your line and start casting. This would be a good time to sit down, enjoy your coffee or your lunch, look at the lake, read the water, see if there's any structure, flats, edges, color changes, look for rising fish. You'll find by spending the extra time that your fishing experience will be much better and a lot more fun. I am going to force myself to wade into this cold water today. It's pretty darn chilly. Anyhow, I hope that you can see all these risers that are rising out here. So we're going to go with a my black mayfly done and a, I call it this thing like the dirty stoplight. It's a midge emerger. It's just got a little hot spot at the head. Looks like an air bubble, kind of. Kind of a, I used a marker on the body. Sort of a dark burgundy purplish color. And then a red spot on the tail. First cast. Ooh, I have a feeling that these fish have been, might be a little tippet shy. We'll wait for the breeze to pick up here. We're with the breeze. A lot of times casting with the breeze, you can softly land it on the water. Here we go. Second cast. Okay. Let's see if we got greenback cutthroats in here or if they're brook trout. Yep, brook trout. It's dinner time. Oh, we got a little brook trout in the net here. Now we're gonna keep him for dinner and hopefully we'll get like four or five more. It's about 1240. It took us a little over three hours to get here. It's a pretty decent hike. I'll go out there where more of these rises are. Just move, put a little bit of movement into my fly. That allows me to keep a little bit of tension in there on the dry. And it also allows the dropper to sort of swim very, very slowly that way. They see that swimming along, they'll hit that too. There we go. Yeah, no greenbacks. Rookie, rookie time. They took the dry. Now the fat little brookie, he's only about an eight incher, but he's gonna taste pretty darn good. Little fatty. Boy, this is just a feeding frenzy out there. Here we 
go. Oh, came off. Uh, even though this water is quite frigid, they, they're hitting this really quickly. That one was just about as soon as it hit the water. Again, these are about, you know, seven, eight inch brook trout. They look like they're about the same size. When I gutted this last one, he was filled, filled to the brim with what looked like black midges. Yeah, take a little bit longer cast out there and just let him come to it, I suppose. Oh. There we go. Okay. Boy, it's fun watching them come up and take it. Rookie to the bag. They're not even taking the dropper at all. Period. Yes. They sure are pretty, but they're not supposed to be brookies in here. They're supposed to be greenback cutthroats. All right, well, I was going to go back out there, but there was a distinct color change in the air. And the fish, all the brookies have stopped rising. It's just starting to rain lightly now. Um, it's getting pretty cold, too. So I'm actually going to get out of here uh, so that I don't have to deal with any lightning. Fly rods and lightning don't go hand in hand, or actually they do go hand in hand. It's raining harder. Just heard some couple of big echoing thunders. Thunder, yeah. Oh, it's, hey, all right, it's not rain. It's actually just, uh, I don't know, is that hail, sleet? I'd much rather have it hailing than raining. Definitely less wet that way, even though I'm soaking wet, but that's fine. Yeah, unless you're used to the cold water, I've gotten pretty used to it over, over the many years. Oh, well, yeah, you could hear that. Anyway, I've gotten used to it. And so I would recommend you come up here into that frigid water, catch hypothermia or something. When I said the weather changes up here pretty quickly, it's kind of like light hail. It's almost like snow, like little snowballs. I'm gonna go try to find some shelter. All right, our situation has actually turned a little bit uh, more serious. Uh, so I'll be a little more serious on this one here too. We're uh, hiding underneath this, just off the trail. Um, give you some tips. Since this is kind of turned into uh, a little bit of a sit and stay situation. Soup. You know how good that's going to taste right now? Lightning strikes uh, probably about every, I don't know, four or five seconds there for a little bit. And so just best put the rod tip down, set it down on the ground. Get another layer of clothing on underneath this waterproof jacket. This isn't a survival channel. I just want to fish. And of course, it's gotten quite cold here. So, gonna make some soup. I'd like to know what inspired you to this campaign or crusade or whatever. Did the Republicans put you up to it? The answer to me is no, no one put me up to it. So then, how did you get the idea of starting? He went after something. There we go. And his friend is still there. Beautiful colors on this skinny guy. He's too skinny to, to eat. Here. Here you go, buddy. Okay, he's swimming off. Go. Okay, we're gonna see if we can catch his friend there. We'll try a little bow and arrow cast. And get it right in front of him. There he goes. 
All right. If you want to renew your confidence, just head down to the outlet stream below the lake. As long as the fish aren't spawning in there, and brook trout spawn in the fall, so. There he goes, he's a feisty guy, so he's got some beautiful little colors on him. And he's gone. Just in case you're wondering the bow and arrow cast, the way that I do it is I just take the hook so it's pointed away from you, bend it. You wanna have a little bit of fly line out beyond the tip of your pole or rod, point it to where you want it and just plunk it in there. We're gonna try this light colored parachute style Cahill take off the black gnat for a little more visibility because you can't see him that well on this water which is a little bit darker because of the light all right we actually ended up tying on a bigger um this is a mayfly pattern in a lighter gray so i can see it i couldn't get the light colored one on because i'm getting old in my eyes all right we've moved back up here here's one rule of thumb i always look behind me Always look behind you before you start pulling out line and ca false casting. Don't catch a tree or something. We have a rising fish. It looks to me like it's a cutthroat. Right in the scum line or the soap line. I call them the soap lines. Whenever you see soap bubbles like that, the fish love to hang out in there. It's an easy way for them to... It's like their... It's like the buffet line right there. Okay, I got, I got one good cast here to make. He's rising. Lazy. Get the right cast in there. Come on, buddy. It's even tiny, tiny stuff right in the surface film. I can't get my fly in there without risking the hit right into the branches. Oh yeah, he's eating tiny. 22 maybe? You don't want that big fly, do you? Okay. We tied on a little micro midge at the end of the big dry. There he goes. Oh shoot, I missed him. He's... I'm gonna do a slower hook set. The water's so cold right now. He's, he's just barely sipping them. There we go. Oh, shoot. Did it again. Oh, uh oh, oh, oh. We almost just slid in the lake, the river. Make sure to keep casting when you're in a perilous situation to try and catch that elusive greenback cutthroat trout. Like if I stand up, I'm gonna go right into this drink. So if I'm gonna do that, I might as well try to catch this fish. He's really spooky. So I'm waiting for him to rise and then when he turns back down. There we go. Beautiful cutthroat. Greenback. Greenback. Oh, I'm slipping. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's, let's try to bring him over here. Finally got him, he was very spooky. Oh my goodness, this is pretty. All right, stay there, bud. Okay, prime of example of why these fish are protected. One, there are so few of them. He took the big dry fly. I fooled you, bud, but guess what? Oh, you're going back in. This is a textbook greenback, Colorado greenback cutthroat trout. And he's under the water completely. I don't really don't want to lift him out of the water. I'll just turn him so you can see the color on this fish. Absolutely gorgeous. He's probably only about 11 inches.
like a tropical beach or something. So I made my way completely around Oozel Lake, caught about five more brook trout, so we had seven of them to bring home. Okay, we're on our way back down. It's about 4.9 miles, and we had a great day here. This lake was very, very enjoyable. Unfortunately, the greenbacks that they say are in this lake, they were pretty much nowhere to be found. Uh, all brook trout out of the lake. And I caught that one beautiful greenback with all the red on his throat, all the way down his belly, uh, right there in the stream, probably a couple hundred yards from the lake, a couple hundred yards downstream. Uh, all the rest of the fish that I saw today we're all brook trout, so they're going to be tasty on the grill. Um, I hope you enjoyed coming along with me. It was uh, one heck of a ride today. Appreciate you checking out the, the video on Oozle Lake in Rocky Mountain National Park. It's beautiful up here. Y'all ought to come out, come fishing. Make sure you get off your couch and come fishing. <laughs>